guys, today we're going to do a mood board um, on Photoshop. And there are lots of different ways to create a mood board, um, lots of even free softwares that are out there. But Photoshop is probably the most powerful tool to help you create a mood board. So before we begin, let's just take a little look at what mood boards are. So you probably are aware of sort of how mood boards are utilized within the fashion industry, um, but maybe not. Um, so mood boards are created at the beginning of the collection, sort of before any designing has been done, to try to um, just get together the inspiration, the sort of aesthetic direction, um, color palette, and all this stuff uh, that is going to be utilized in the actual collection. So, you know, we can just take a look at a few. This is really just an image search for fashion mood boards. Um, there's lots of different ways to make one. Um, I started off with one that I particularly like, um, and I like it for a number of reasons. Um, I think it's perfectly balanced with sort of garment inspiration and just aesthetic inspiration. So we have like, you know, the fungus and the gills of the fungus creating these lovely striations. We see sort of how that's gonna be interpreted in our garment. We see a very clear color palette. Now, it's always very important that everything you utilize on your Moodle board adheres to your color palette. Um, now, this one has chosen to do a small color palette down here, um, but even without it, you can clearly see what the color palette is going to be. Um, it's sort of streamlined. It's nice and neat. Um, the composition is clean. Uh, so, you know, overall, this is an excellent mood board. If we look at some of the other ones, we can sort of see a little bit where they go wrong. Now, a lot of fashion mood boards, and there's nothing wrong with it, let's say maybe take this one for instance, um, get a little cluttered. Uh, people tend to just put every image they can possibly find. They overlap it without a lot of good construction. Little spaces are left. So, you know, this is uh, a, a good example of uh, it's not pleasing to look at. Uh, we're still obviously getting our color palette through. We're getting a lot of design details. We see, um, you know, heavy sort of embellished embroidery with big collars. So we're getting a nice sort of silhouette shape. We're getting fabrics that we're going to use. Um, you know, top heavy, a lot of fur and, uh, uh, fullness around the shoulders. Um, but, you know, just overall, it's not that pleasing to look at. So, <clears throat> we obviously want it to be pleasing to look at. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to sort of look at um, a lot of different techniques that are utilized when putting mood boards together. And a lot of those are going to focus on, you know, um, adjusting the color and uh, making selections. So let's begin our mood board. So um, in this instance, we are not working from a uh, original photograph. We're going to be creating our, no our own. So when you open up Photoshop, go to Create New. Now there are going to be some presets for this um, project. So if you go to print, it's basically going to follow as if we were going to be printing our mood boards out, which usually we would if we were working for a company and then we'd um, give it out um, or hang it up along with the rest of our collection presentation. And we're going to choose the letter. Um, now the letter is 8.5 by 11. It's going to be 300 pixels per inch, and you can choose any orientation you want, either portrait or landscape. I'm going to choose landscape just for the demo. And you're also going to choose CMYK. Now remember, if anything is going to be um, for printing uh, or destined to be printed, you probably want to choose CMYK. It'll calibrate better to the printer's colors. Alrighty. You can also choose a different background color if you want, but you can also change it once we're in the actual um, document. So let's create it. And here we are. We have our sort of base canvas, our size and revolution all set. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm 
kind of think of a sort of inspiration and do a bunch of sort of maybe image searches to collect a pool of images that I think look nice. I'm going to do a mood board based on fish scales. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I've already chosen this one. I like it. So um, to get it into Photoshop, I'm going to right click, copy image, and then hit, you can go to file or hit control new. Now Photoshop is smart enough to um, see things on your clipboard. So when you copy an image, it reads it. And the first thing that will pop up is something that says clipboard. And that is going to be the perfect size and resolution based on the image on your clip, um, clipboard. So let's open that up and then I'm going to paste in the image, just control V. And I'm going to continue doing this till I get a nice pool of images. We don't have to use all of our images, but it's nice to get a sort of good pool going. So I have some, this is nice too. So just copy and pasting some images. Might be nice to also get like some fabric details that you want. So, you know, fish scales, I'm thinking sort of sequins. So we can that I liked. It's a cute little outfit as well. search, but there was another one I did. And brought up some nice results. And one more garment that I love. This is a Madame Viennet. If you don't know who she is, look her up. She was really popular, like in the 20s and 30s. Did some gorgeous stuff. Okay. I'm probably ready to begin. I have a bunch of images. Again, if you go crazy, if you want to do more, go right for go right ahead it's another little fabric that i was can't find now actually this is pretty okay <clears throat> so now that we have all of our images here in their own files and i like to put them in their own files you know it's a little less cluttered than doing it everything directly and you can sort of prepare them to go into your final image. But here we are, let's go back to our original image. Now there's a bunch of things that you can do to help you sort of with the layout. 
So if you go to view show, you can show a grid, which can be very helpful in aligning different elements. You can also use the guides. Sometimes I like to just know where the middle um, of the image is. So we can drag out guidelines, so I can click and drag out from the rulers to create guidelines that will help us sort of place the images. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, and this might be a really nice background. Um, it's overall textured, it's my inspiration. However, let's say I don't want this color. Let's say I'm going to do more of a, oh, um, like purple slash gray color palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and this should be old hat for you by now. And I'm going to go to the Hue Saturation. And I'm just going to go ahead and adjust till I get to the color that I want. Maybe a little cooler. That's nice. Maybe a little lighter. Actually, you know what? I'm going to adjust the levels instead because I don't really want the whole thing to be washed out. I just kind of wanted a little bit of a lighter purple, but I want to keep those nice dark shadows. So I'm just going to adjust the midtones a little bit. Okay, now it's ready. I'm going to select the whole thing by hitting Control A. And you can see that now we have the marching ants all around our whole image. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy and then go into um, my image, my, my base image, and hit, oh, I guess I didn't hit Control C hard enough. <laughs> Oh, also, we got to make sure we're on the layer we want copied. If anything doesn't go, just double check to see what layer you're on. Um, because a lot of times, again, uh, you have forgotten what layer you're on. Okay. And any reason why we're not copying? Alrighty. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this to work as a background image. Now I'm probably going to have to copy and paste it again. So once I've sized it, I'm going to copy, control C, control V to paste again. Now what I'd actually like is um, for the light part to be in the middle and the dark part to be out here. It'll look a lot better. So what I'm going to do is while this is selected, I'm just going to start a transformation a little bit and then right click and go to flip vertical. And that's going to flip it up here like this. Boop. Then I'm going to place it so we get a nice symmetry. And I want that to be right on that line, that guideline. So I'm going to line this up here. We're going to lose a little bit of the image but I can also shrink it down or just cut it off. It doesn't matter too much. Um, if you want to scale uh, to start to change the proportions, remember that you would hold shift. So I'm just gonna hold shift to shrink it down a little bit. Hit enter to apply the transformation. I'm gonna do the same thing right up here. Okay. Now we've sort of created our background for the um, mood board. I have them on two layers here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge down the layer. That'll just give this background layer, um, uh, make it into one. So if I ever want to just toggle it off, toggle it on, I can. I thought it was good to have different layers, but if you have sort of one element on many different layers, it's good to merge it down to get it on one layer. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Now let's get to some of our other stuff. I want to maybe put in um, one of the outfits, maybe my main outfit. Where did I put it first? Um, just so I can sort of build around it. So I'm going to zoom this in. Unfortunately, this is not the highest resolution. It's always good to find photos that are um, higher resolution. Maybe I can find this in a higher resolution. Let me just go ahead and... It's such a famous dress. No, I'm not going to spend too much time looking for it. Here we are. Close. At least a better view of it. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, stunning. Alright, yeah, let's use this one. I like it better. So what I want to do, and this is going to be a little tricky, I want to isolate just the dress, and there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. We can use the polygon lasso tool, that's perfectly fine, but I want to show you a few other different ways of making selections. Sometimes they're quicker, sometimes they're more precise, it's really up to you, the shape of the thing that you want to um, uh, select, and really the background. So <clears throat> here we have a... Um, it's, it would be great if it was perfectly white or perfectly a color, um, but we're going to try this anyways and see how it works. I'm going to use a selection method called uh, color range. So I'm going to come up here. It's not a tool. It's part of our select menu, and I'm going to click on color range. Now, this will select based by color, and depending on your background or the object that you want to select, you'll select one or the other. Um, and you might be saying, well, what is the best thing for me? Well, if your image is one solid color that's very different than the background, the background's very multicolored, you might want to just select the uh, image itself. So we can try it with the dress. The dress has a lot of different colors. And so we can click here and increase the fuzziness. And whatever is white here or lighter is going to be selected. Now, if I want to try a couple different colors, I can always add to the selection and try to go ahead and go in and select more of these areas and these colors. And it's working pretty well, considering this might not be the best method for this. There's a lot of things that aren't getting um, selected, but I just want to show you how it works. So I'm going to hit OK now. Now, it's not the best selection. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff in here that I, 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 I do want that's not being selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control D to deselect and go back, and I'm going to try doing the background. So I'm going to select just the background. Now, it's bleeding in here. I might need to do some touch-ups, but let's try to get just that background. Okay, let's get this up here. Now, we are getting some areas in here, but let me just show you what this looks like. And again, this would work a lot better with cleaner color work. We'll try it later. Maybe this wasn't the best image to try it on. So I still have some stuff in here, so I can go in and clean up this selection with my polygon lasso tool. So what I want to do is... I want to actually remove from the selection. So the way that this works is I would be selecting the background and then we would inverse the selection. So remember right now it's just the background that's selected, not the actual dress. So what I want to do is remove from the selection and just clean up a little bit. Now we'll do some final cleaning when we post it into the actual image. But these things like this, these little bubbles, I'm just going to get rid of them by using the polygon lasso tool right around them. All this area right in here.
And what I want to see is I want to see those marching ants in a fairly tight, nice line around the dress. Now don't worry if you didn't get it all because we can also do some cleanup later. Like we're going to have to do some cleanup there. This would be good too if there's like, you know, spots between the arms and everything else. Okay, so now I have the full background selected but not the actual dress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select and hit inverse. And now it's the dress that's selected and not anything else. So I can hit control C to copy it and move on back to my original image and paste it in. It's awful tiny, isn't it? That's okay, we can scale it up. Not too much or else it'll look grainy. And this is why it's important to, to use uh, and source from really high res images. So I'm gonna hit my move tool now, um, I'm going to reiterate, I said this in the first lesson, but this is always just one of the most uh, frequent questions that I get. Um, so to scale, to rotate, um, anything else, um, and it, uh, I get this little bounding box, and I can use the move tool around this bounding box. But sometimes this bounding box doesn't show. So um, why isn't it there? It's because your show transform controls box is not selected. Be sure, be sure, it will look like this. And you'll be like, how do I scale it? How do I rotate it? Um, you can still move it, but you can't scale or rotate it. So make sure, I don't know why it's not a preset to just have this darn thing uh, checked because you're gonna use it. <laughs> you're gonna use it a lot. Um, just make sure that's checked when you're in the move tool and then you can just go ahead and start scaling. Um, without holding shift, it will constrain your proportions. If you do hold shift, um, it will allow you to make it you know, bigger or fatter, uh, skinnier, things like that. Now this is lovely you know, and I think for composition, well, we'll see what it looks like. I might want to just flip it over. Now this is lovely. Um, but I kind of want a gray and purple um, mood board. It's a little fuzzy around the edges. So um, let me go back. I might want to feather it a little less. But it looks okay. I don't really want to do the whole thing over again. Um, feather it less if it's too fuzzy for you, I'll just tell you. <laughs> um, and in this instance, let me go to my layers and, okay, lock, lock. I want this to be maybe um, a little higher in contrast so it will stand out. So let's increase the contrast by adjusting our levels. And let's also adjust our color balance. I'm sorry, let's uh, adjust our saturation first because again, I would like this to be more of a gray than a, um, you know, an off-white. So I'm going to desaturate it and we get sort of a nicer um, cool color. And if I want it a little bit cooler, I'm just going to make it more sort of like a blue-gray. Perfect. And it can stand to be a little bit bigger. And we'll place it right over here. Okay, so we have our first element in. Let's put some more elements um, in as well. What else do we have? This is lovely, and this will kind of match our gray of the um, dress. So um, let me try first with the select tool in the color range. It's going to not do so well because of these white parts that bleed in. So what I'm actually going to do is on, oop, for this one, I want to show you another selection tool um, method, and it's going to be your most precise selection method. And it's using the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a more complex tool and if you don't like it for Photoshop, 
you know, you can probably just use the um, polygon lasso tool. The polygon lasso tool is probably just sort of the step down in um, uh, precision for selection. Um, but there are a few advantage to, advantages to the pen tool over the polygon lasso tool. Um, and in any case, we're going to be using a very similar pen tool in Illustrator once we move to Illustrator. And this is actually our last project in Photoshop. Next week we're going to be moving to Illustrator. And I'd say like 90% of Illustrator is done with the pen tool. So you will get very familiar. This might be a nice, uh, you know, chance for you to get familiar with it a little bit earlier on. Um, but we're going to come down here and I just want to show you how the pen tool works a little bit. Um, you know, we get a, a very simple uh, illustration here, but um, let me show you a little bit um, more detailed. So I'm going to select it, and it's very important to look at the bottom right of the pen tool icon, which looks like, you know, a little um, uh, calligraphy nib. And those um, little icons will sort of tell you about what the tool is thinking it's going to be doing. Um, so just to start off, um, we can use the pen tool in the same way that we use the polygon lasso tool um, in the essence that we just point and click and create sort of little anchor points and create a line in between it. Now that star that we saw to begin with means start a new line, that little asterisk. Um, if we go back that means pick up. That means if I go and do something else and blah, 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 blah. Um, I can still pick up my pen tool and go back and pick up the line. That's what the slash means, the diagonal slash. Now if I go back over an existing anchor point, I get a minus, and that means to delete it. If I go over an existing line, I get a plus sign, and that means add a anchor point, okay? Now, what makes this better than the uh, polygon lasso tool is that we can add curves. So those were just a point and click, and every time you just point and click, you get a hard corner with a straight line in between it. But if I were to click and then um, on my next click, I'm going to click and hold the mouse button down. So I'm clicking and holding the mouse button down, and I'm going to drag the mouse away from the point while, again, that mouse button is held down. Um, and depending on how far I drag the mouse away and in what direction, I get a curve. It can take a little practice to get used to getting the curves that you want, but just imagine, so um, what's creating these curves is uh, the two other straight lines with the small circles on the end. They're called handlebars. And the one that's closest to the curve, if you watch it, it's sort of pulling out that center of the curve. So imagine it's sort of stretching it out and you can get whatever curve you want. Now, not only is it going to curve this line, but this guy over here is going to dictate a balanced counter curve on the next time I click. Now, this could be something that you want or something that you don't want. Um, if you don't want it, the other nice um, thing, the other advantage to using the pen tool over the um, polygon lasso tool, not only you can you do curves, but you can adjust the line before you're finished. And we can do that with this white arrow tool. It's called the direct selection tool. And with that, I can go in and individually adjust each one of my anchor points. And not only can I do that, is if I click on a curve point, I can adjust the curve by manipulating the handlebars. So say I didn't want a curve coming out of here. I can just sync that right back in to uh, the anchor point. Or if I wanted this one to be bigger, or this one to be smaller. So we have this ability to individually manipulate um, every single part of um, our line, which allows us to create very, very specific and precise adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this fish using the pen tool. Now, you might have also noticed, oh, let me show you one more thing, I'm sorry. 
uh, one more icon. If we get to that last one, we get a circle. That means it's going to close the shape. And this is important when we're going to make a selection because a selection needs to be an enclosed space, which means it ends where it starts. So you need to see that little circle at the last point. Now you'll also notice that this is not a marching ants yet. That will take one additional step. So I'm gonna go ahead and utilize my zoom to get a really nice close image of this fishy. And I'm gonna go in and make a real nice selection. Now I'm gonna curve that there, but you can see I don't really want it to scoop in. I want it to scoop out again. So I'm gonna go back and just pop that in. And then maybe I want to push this out a little bit so I can create another anchor point and grab it in. So you can see, you can uh, allows you to make mistakes. It allows you to make changes. Very, very nice, precise tool. And we'll just continue on. can go in and get these soft curves very easily. I'm just going to go in and place points all around the fish. And it might be a little boring, so if you want to <laughs> if you want to skip ahead, go right ahead. Okay, now that I've gone ahead and made um, my, what's really called a path, because it's not a selection yet, so we create paths with the uh, pen tool, and then we can create them into other things. We can create them into lines, but more importantly for our purposes right now, we can create selections out of them. So in the layers menu, I'm going to go to paths, and of course if you don't see it, just go to windows. Um, any little box or anything that you don't see, you can find in Windows. And I'll select it, Paths, right here. And we can see my line right here. So I'm going to make sure that that's selected. 
and then come down here and we see something that looks like our little marching ants but still and I'm just gonna click it and it's gonna go ahead and make a selection for me okay now what I can do is I can copy this and bring it into my image here I'm gonna wonder I think it'd be nicer if it was flipped around so let's just begin a transformation right click and I want to flip this horizontally so we kind of have this coming out here that would look kind of nice right just like so give us a little bit of composition through the uh, image it's a little yellowy so I'm gonna hit enter and I want to isolate by locking my other layer going on this one and what I'm gonna do is just gonna make it slightly more blue than yellow Okay, um, now what would also be nice is, you know, I have these fringes and I might want to use some chiffon and um, this is kind of see-through, that this sort of top, this dorsal fin. It'd be really nice if this was see-through on my um, mood board as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a quicker selection using just my polygon lasso tool. Now this doesn't have to be as precise because I'm just working on this layer. And once I get past this sort of seam where the um, body meets the fin, I don't really need to be precise at all. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna place it on its own layer. And on this layer, I'm going to adjust the opacity, which is going to make it see-through, which is kind of nice. It'll blend right in with the background. I'm going to place it back on top of the fish where it needs to go. Boop. And what I'll do from here is now remember how I said it's nice to have elements that are the same on both layers. So this, the top fin, and the actual body of the fish are now in two separate layers. So let's just merge it down. And there we go. It's all on one layer now. Okay, now let's move along. We're getting the mood board. We got some nice fish scales, some nice inspiration. What else do I have? Okay, I'm gonna start to get rid of some of the stuff that I've already used just to clear up some of these files. Oh, that's nice. You know what I can do? I can use that for sort of a title background if I want. Um, I don't know if it goes too far away from our idea, but it is a fish scale, so why not? Uh, obviously not the right color, so let's go ahead, adjust. Um, remember that another way that we can go ahead and adjust our color is with the photo filter. It's a little bit more of a subtle way, so um, it sort of again sort of uh, looks like a transparency being put over so let's we're doing purple so let's maybe a little bit of cooler purple um, and let's up the density of that filter and you can see it's now been altered and that actually looks pretty good just like that so I'm going to copy this and bring it in copy paste now what I'd like to do is maybe this is going to be my sort of title Maybe I'll put the tile right up here. Now this is going to be a um, requirement that you um, utilize text for your um, mood board. So let's get into the text tool. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer for now. And this is going to be sort of my background for the text. So I'm going to go here. Now there's um, really two ways that you can apply text. Actually, well, many more ways. Um, 
the first way is to drag, uh, click and drag out a selected area. And what that will do is it will create a text box. Now this is really good if you want to do like a paragraph or like sentences or have like a lot of text that you want to put in. Um, but if it's just a title or a line, I personally prefer to just go ahead and um, click. And that's not going to constrain it to a oops, um, a box, it's just going to give you sort of a line. So if it's just a title or anything like that, now it fills it in with lorem ipsum or whatever, some gibberish, and it's just a placeholder text. So you can check out, you know, um, uh, the font and whatever else. So let's go ahead and use this. And I've picked out this font, but we can always change it. Maybe I do want to change it. So highlight it with, you know, just like in, an, in a word processor, highlight it with your text tool. And you can go ahead and choose whatever you like. Maybe a little Bauhaus. Okay? And we'll put in our text. Got to think in the future, right? <laughs> And from here as well, if we highlight, we can change the size by changing our font size. And we can also change the color. Now the white is looking pretty nice, I'm not going to lie, so I might want to keep it. But let's look maybe at a light gray or a darker gray. Darker gray starts to blend in too much. Um, whatever you choose, make sure that it stands out well against your background. I think I do want a little bit of a gray like that, but it's not standing out as well as I'd like it to. So I'm actually going to go to layer 4 and darken it a little bit overall so my text pops out. Because I kind of like the gray. That's going to be one of our colors, so I may as well use it over white. overall darken it. See how that's popping out much nicer? Lovely. Okay, back to text. There is an option, so if you click and hold down on the drop down menu, you can use a vertical type text too. So if you want to use that. It will create a vertical text for you. You can see that. Do, 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 do. Maybe put it here, wherever you'd like it. Now with the Move tool, you can also adjust the size of your text. And um, this might even be better because you can hold Shift, and if you want it to be sort of longer instead of fatter, you can adjust the proportions as such. Just hold that shift key, otherwise it's going to just have a nice long. There we go. Let's center that in here. Maybe make it a little thinner. Now the other thing that you can do with your text is apply a warp to it. Now be careful. Um, a lot of times this will end up looking hokey, and you certainly don't want that. But just go ahead, highlight it, and then here we have the text warp tool. Now, we have a fish scale, so let's see if I can make something that's kind of like a fish scale. So that would be, let's see, can we do it with an arc? Bendy. 
So now I'm echoing that sort of fish scale sc shape in here. Now this might be, need to be a little bit smaller. So let's go to layer four. I'm just gonna shrink this a wee bit right there. Now, what look, might look nice to sort of bring this out is to create a border for it. So, um, and you can do this to, just to create color shapes, and we'll use this to create color uh, swatches as well. Um, and we're going to use, sorry, not the gradient tool, but um, the rectangle tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag down a nice little box that's going to wrap around this sort of little um, title background right here. What should automatically pop up is your properties. If it doesn't, let me show you where you can find it. It's right here. And whenever you have um, an object or anything highlighted, you can always go to the properties and it should have some fun things in there for you to play around with. Now, um, this is the size of the box, and since I clicked and dragged pretty well, I don't need to change it. Um, it's going to be a nil fill, so the red line means invisible. And of course I don't want anything in there because I already have what I want in there. I have my title and my texture. But I do want a nice stroke. Um, I no, don't necessarily want black. Um, But I can double click, and it has colors that I've used already. So I have some nice grays. Maybe I can use a gray. See how that looks. If not, I'll use a purple. And I can increase the thickness of my line. Now, everything's kind of round because of the fish scales. So if I want to round the corners of my border, I can choose that. This is the corner option. This would be just an end option if you have just a line. And I'm going to choose a nice roundness, but I also have to apply the roundness down here. So let's try 30 pixels, and it will link it for all the four corners. If not, you can unlink it and do individual roundness for each one. And let's just take a look at that. Looks like we have some nice round corners. Now to really see um, what's going on, I'm going to go ahead and just flick off my grid and flick off my, gr my guides. It's always good to sort of do that because I can kind of, um, uh, you know, get in the way of what you're creating. All right, not too bad. I think what I'll do is I'll put some of the swatches I want to use down here. Here we go. Now we have a little watermark here and I don't want to utilize that and it's going to be easy to do that. I'll just use a regular one. This is going to be just a square swatch. So I'm just going to select an area that it's not in and I want to do a bit of color adjustments as well. Make it a little cooler, a little bit more lavendery. It's interesting that sometimes, you know, you're going to get the color not exactly. I'm on like orange, but it's making it look purpley. <laughs> that's good. We get a little steely purple. That's nice. Copy and we'll place it in. And let's maybe start having this come down here. And let's make this here. Now I don't want this to block out my nice sort of standalone piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to make sure that this is below the layer of my dress right there. Okay? And even let's maybe move her a little bit to the right. She sort of stands in here, because that's her space. It's nice when everything has its space. Oh, I forgot about this cute little thing. Uh, where can we put that in? Maybe over here.
Now I want to select her out, and it's going to be tricky. It would be so easy if these white things weren't here. But let's use our color select. color select and try to add to that selection a little bit. Now I want to hold off on the white she's getting too selected actually I guess I don't have anything that really would have worked perfect with the color select which is you know, when it works it works real great not kind of annoying. So I'm just going to do a quick selection with my polygon lasso tool. We haven't done this, so we'll do this. And I have it feathered here at five pixels. You do want it feathered. Now, how much you want it feathered is going to um, depend greatly on the resolution of the image that you're sourcing from. Um, five pixel feathering on a real low res image um, is going to have a big effect. If you do five pickles on a very high res image, um, you might not even be able to tell. You don't really want, I mean, if you want fuzzy edges, that's great. Um, it could be part of your aesthetic. You don't really want the visible fuzz fuzzy edges. You just want it to be kind of soft so it blends better and is a little bit less harsh um, when you um, place it into uh, a background. I hope this doesn't look too choppy. If not, maybe we'll use the color range or I'll use the pen tool. But I don't want to make this tutorial super long and full of me making really tiny, minute selections. I should be a little, just a little bit more zoomed in. Now this might be, see, I'm going to make mistakes, but I can always clean up the selection later. The fingers warrant a good, good zoom. Always make your selection zoomed in. It just makes it easier. Now the feathering is going to sort of smooth this line out a bit, so I don't need to fix every little jaggedy bit. see it smoothed it out so I'm just gonna look for anything obviously terrible it's maybe a little bit here but we'll see how oh I forgot her knee so let's add to the selection can't be forgetting knees there we are oh and her other leg ha 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 Sorry, leg. Now, if there's anything else that really shows up, uh, like maybe in here, I can always fix that later as well. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and control copy and place her in.
Now, I kind of like her behind the, the fish, but obviously she needs to be in front of my sign. So let's do this. So here's a really good instance of why it would be good uh, to merge down your layers. Like this is one element, right? Um, the rectangle, the text, and uh, the background. But I have them all in separate layers and it gets a bit jumbled because I wanted to sort of move things around. So I'm gonna go ahead and just merge down some of these layers. So this whole thing will become one thing. Okay, so now, and you can toggle it on and off to see, that is just one thing. Where I kinda want her, there's, all right, yes, yes. Let's put her like right there. Boop. That's cute. Maybe a little bit smaller. All right. Now, okay, we use this dress. You don't need to use all the images you find. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't. Um, I always go a little overboard and there's um, things that I don't use. Um, oh, this was lovely. You gotta use this. Um, let's change the color a little bit though. Actually, you know what? Um, this might be a nice place to use the color range just for color adjustments because I don't really want that orange. But let's see what color. Let's uh, change it to a purpley color that I like. Okay, let's start here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select based on color range because I just want to adjust the green. So I'm going to adjust select the green. And let's make it gray by reducing the saturation. Reducing the lightness. Okay, pretty good. It's more of a gray. Now I want to attack uh, that sort of lime green. And what should we make it? A real dark gray? It's got a nice light, light gray. I'm gonna take away the saturation and up the lightness. Okay, so um, this is looking much better for my color palette. It's still a little wee bit green. Um, so what I'm gonna do and what should I do? Shall I fix this with a filter? Better. All right, let's copy. Place this in, and where shall we put this? Maybe down here. Do I want that above the fish? Let's see. Okay. 
anyways, all coming together. So we have this, we have our elements. I don't think I'm going to use this lace. This would be great. Oh, hold on. If I don't use it, I might. Oops, sorry. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to use this either. And this was, okay. So we've used all our images. The last thing I might want to do is put in a bit of a color palette. So um, let's go down here and I want to use round um, color palettes. So I'm going to uh, just do a few swatches and of course you can do whatever shape you want. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and to make a nice circle, hold shift and it will constrain those proportions and we get the same property box as we got with the um, rectangle, uh, slightly different. So I'm gonna go ahead and here on the fill, um, use my eyedropper tool. Now what's nice about the eyedropper tool is I can select colors directly from my mood board. So if I like this purple, I can select that and then it will show up right here. Just let's make sure that my, there it is. And let's change this to that nice gray that I used over here so we get that bit of consistency. And let's up this guy. That's fine. Okay, now what I want to do is instead of make more, I want to just copy and paste this. This will make sure that all my swatches are the same size. And we'll just go back and let's get, you know, what do we have? Some nice grays. Where's a nice gray? That's nice. Keep on going till we fill out um, all of our color palette. Now you don't have to use your color picker, but it's it's always nice to do so. Get a little bit of blue in there, why not? Purples, we need a soft lavender. It's too soft. Is that too close to the other one? Okay, maybe a couple other grays, Just a lighter gray. want two more just because it'll look <laughs> two more will look good <laughs> we'll put it right here and let's get a lighter gray Ooh. light that's nice yeah or maybe we can use this one Okay, one more. Maybe deep dark purple. Okay, so there's our color palette. Now we're gonna get a lot uh, further and more into detail with color palettes um, when we get to Illustrator. Now at this point I have all of my elements on my mood board and I'm just gonna wanna sort of maybe like take a break, step back, 
come back to it and look and sort of try to see what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what needs to be fixed. Um, I don't like the placement of this down here already. I think what I'd like to do to make this blend in a bit more is hopefully this is on the repeat and it is I'm going to put this sort of just like this and I want it now to sit below these different elements do I want it? yeah I want it below the fish That already is looking a, a little bit nicer because this line in here, I don't really want that interrupted and it's looking better here. Now this has a border and these don't. I'm wondering if they should. Maybe I should do the same up here. I don't want too much of my little fish scales covered, but... Maybe. Let's try it, see what it looks like. We can always get rid of it. Actually, I can just take this and adjust it. Oops, that's right. I merge layer, so let's make a new one. I want it to be the same color as this one. I made this, so I'm just going to have to eyeball it. Much thicker. A little less thick. There, that looks good. And puts around those corners. Okay, now the reason you only see half is a layering issue. Um, my layer here needs to be, oh, is this it? No, where's my shape layer? There it is. It needs to be below her, but above There we go. Now what I might want to do is I might want to create a nice little border for the whole thing. Never underestimate a nice border. Obviously I want this on top of everything. So when I get to the layers, I'll do that. So here we have it. I have my mood board and um, again I'll probably go and maybe adjust some things. Kind of maybe maybe put a border around this or you know just adjust some elements here and there um, uh, to look you know make it look as nice as you can. Try to just sort of play around with the composition. Ste again step back, look at it, so on and so forth. But for purposes of just this demonstration let's call it done. And what I want to do when I'm done is go to File, Save As. Now, when you are working on your 
uh, mood board or anything else in Photoshop and you're not done, save it as a PSD. If you are done, please save it as a JPEG. So when you are done, switch to JPEG. Um, do your name mood board and save. Save it as a maximum and you're done. Hope you had fun and hope you had fun with Photoshop. And like I said, we're going to be starting Illustrator next week. Um, so, you know, um, this is a very short semester and we move really quick. So um, if you get a little extra time just to play around with Photoshop, uh, definitely do. Um, it's a lot of fun. All right, guys. See you next time.